Okay, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome, welcome back to Lowy the Legends. We have an average of 520 ELO here. We have a map that I'm really excited to cast because I really like it called Acropolis. Uh, on Acropolis, you start in a hill, and it's awkward to get wood while up on this hill, so you need to expand to get more wood. Um, and then you, you have to expand for other resources as well, like stones and gold. Now, this generation is interesting because normally you're on the other side of the map. Normally, it's like red would be here, right? And then blue would be here. But these guys are really close to each other. They could maybe attach a zip line from this mountain, and you could just zoom over to this mountain. Like, that'd be pretty freaking cool. Uh, I don't know why I just thought of a zip line. It's the first time, first time I've talked about a zip line in a long time. But uh, now I kind of want to get on one. We have the Huns for Charlie. And Charlie is, okay, figuring out the sheep situation. And hunts can be fun to play, right? You don't have to build houses, which just makes, that just removes a, a task from the game that a lot of people might struggle with. Leads to some flexibility in more competitive situations. And then the Italians over here, they are going to have to make houses. They're known for good navy. But honestly, just super flexible on land as well. And if you want to go archers with them or knights with them, you can do so. Um, I will say that the Genoese crossbowmen, their unique unit, a real killer unit against civilizations that are known for making units on horses, which would be the Huns. Um, again, we're chilling, right? It's 500 ELO. There's not a ton going on uh, for the time being. If I had to predict, I would say that we are going to see auto scout. At some point, and both scouts are going to end up in the right corner. And these guys have to eventually figure out a game plan. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I guess I'll tell a story about zip lining <laughs> for the time being. Now, it's not really a story, but um, if you guys are curious about this, I highly suggest you Google some images or videos. So, there's this place, and trust me, this somehow relates to zip lining. Okay, there's this place in Florida. And it's like the most Florida thing ever. And it's called Gatorland. Okay. So, you know, you go to a zoo and there's like different types of animals, lots of variety. It's like, cool. I get to experience a lot. Gatorland is gators and crocodiles. And these things are freaking massive. Okay. They are huge. And you can, if you wish to, like pay to get food to like set, throw out to them. Um, and like they're right below you at some, some points. Right. Um, so you could feed these things, and I imagine what they're being fed is kind of like steroids for gators, right? So that's like they're so why they're so huge. Anyways, hundreds, if not thousands, just gators. Now gators, it's actually really cool. They got some shows, but more than anything, it's just like, oh, go look at the freaking gators. Um, at one point, you you go, and oh boy, look at Charlie here. Charlie's gonna lose a villager to a boar, but it's okay because the boar meat's worth it. Um, there was one point where you go to like this beach. And there's like feeding time for certain gators. They come up to the beach and they just like lay there. And then you throw big chunks of meat out to them. Like it's ridiculous, right? Uh, there's a photo. I don't know if this ever hit YouTube, but there's an old photo. I'm now fiance and I there uh, floating around there somewhere. But anyways, so at this place, okay. Um, at this place, there's a zip line. So you got these hungry gators. They're massive. They're like, some of them are like 12 feet, right? And you zip line and you get pretty close to these things. Now, not close enough where they could jump up and hit your toes if you're a normal person. But like, you know, if you've got really long legs, if you're wearing sandals on the day, they might look at your toes and say, that looks like chicken nuggets, right? That was a pretty cool experience. And somehow we got here because I started talking about zip lining. So that was the last time I was on a zip line. Anyways, back to this game. We've got boars coming in. Both players are taking berries. Um, and it's been pretty good. I did predict we'd see auto scouts. I didn't think we would see an auto sheep. So that's rather interesting. But I think blue is already auto scouting, right? No, it's manual scout. Scout went up here and came back. And Scout now has maybe located the enemy, and Blue's happy with it. All right, not bad. Um, one villager did die for Blue, but all is good. Life goes on. It is funny to me, though, that Blue has decided not to take this boar. 
they lost their friend and they're like, well, actually, those things are very dangerous. I think we can get by on just farms and berries for now. <laughs> What's up, Mark? Ridiculous and any Florida story go together like peanut butter and jelly? Yeah, maybe. But yeah, I, 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 if you're ever in the area, like if you're ever in like the Orlando area, oh God! Okay, dead villager. It's an even game now. Putting Gatorland on your list should be a thing. It is exactly what you would expect. Just lots of gators, though. So, um, so two boars brought in for Attila on Fire. I really like Attila on Fire's name as well. It's interesting that we have Attila on Fire 8. Here's a question. If you put a number and then a space at the start of your username in Age of Empires, when you hit the next stage... Does it taunt at all? Because look, like, well, I guess when they're in Feudal Age, it'll show you, but it'll say Attila on fire has reached the Feudal Age. Oh, wow. Blue started to attack there. So the reason that came to my mind is because back in the day, you would have some players who would have a number at the start of their name. And um, so when they would reach the next stage, it would actually do the taunt. That was pre-definitive edition, though, so I'm not sure if that works in present day Age of Empires. Anyways, Blue's, like, really aggressive against these villagers, and I think Blue has found out multiple times now that that's maybe not the play, and almost loses the Scout. But Scout gets away there on 3 HP, just one hit away. And Scout will see that Red has actually made some army here. So this might actually inspire Blue to do the same. The Scout runs away, and we'll have a barracks there for Blue. But just watch, when you see Redhead Feudal Age, it should just say Attila on Fire 8 has reached the Feudal Age. I'm really curious on if you just put a number there, if it'll play a taunt. Like, I used to play a player who um, was Ob uh, being rushed. Yeah, look, Attila on Fire 8 advanced the Feudal Age. So I don't know. Has Red located the enemy yet? Red has located the enemy. Somewhat, anyways. At home, we have the defensive division. Four militia and now a spearman. And we are going to have uh, archer range and a market go up here. I say defensive. It might be aggressive. They might be angry that the scout showed up and attacked their people. And so far, I actually think I prefer blue's economy. Blue's floating a whole lot more in the way of resources. And Blue says, Militia? I can do that too. And it's going to add a second barracks as well. So we're going to have a nice little infantry opening here, it seems. What's the theme music to Gatorlands? <laughs> American Idiot by Green Day. Listen, American Idiot is not about Gator theme parks. <laughs> also, I don't want to get, like go too far deep down the music rabbit hole here because I could probably do it for hours. But that album is one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, very good album. Lots of bangers on that one. Lots of underrated songs as well, right? Okay, this was the sheep, which earlier on, Red had forgotten about. There might have been some history. I don't know. Like, you know, maybe Red blamed the sheep for some predicament in the economy and then sent the sheep away as punishment because they were related but blue has the sheep now guys this is very important stuff to be talking about and the sheep is going to head on home i wonder if the sheep is going to feed information to blue or if blue's going to eat the sheep could make maybe do both right yes i'm talking like an idiot right now if you're surprised then you haven't been here long enough mining camp for blue gonna get some stone income why not and I like the new lumber camp. You need to do that on Acropolis so your wood's more efficient. That was my fifth grade girlfriend's favorite album, LOL. That's interesting that you remember that. <laughs> but I suppose it makes sense. Hey, more sheep. Wait, which one is the sheep? Hold on, hold on. I created a storyline. We have to figure this out. Ah. So this guy showed up, and then the others joined. <clears throat> Wait, Weird Al has a Canadian idiot? Oh, I never heard that. How have I never heard of that? 
But feels like Blue's defense is going to be just on time here. Oh no, the enemy sheep's getting eaten first. <laughs> they eat the sheep and they gain its knowledge. Yeah, maybe that's it. See, Red wants some army to defend, and then this army is going to attack. It's two men at arms and then two skirms. And Blue should be able to thwart this with four men at arms. But no loom yet, and this villager could get boxed in, so it could lead to a villager kill. This would be good for Red because Blue does have the lead with economy uh, in terms of the eco setup from what I can see. I'll show resources collected in a bit. But okay, Blue. Not really running away with the villagers. They still, they're very good employees. They want to go back to their job here. And now they're even fighting. Okay, so, well, you could have saved a lot more here if you're Blue. But in the end, the fight gets cleared up. Good defense. So, you know, credit needs to be given there. Anyways. Um, T90, a thousand elo player here. Can you give us some tips on the proper way to play Acropolis? So, aggression is your number one, is the number one thing, right? If you're more of a defensive player, it's probably not the map for you. I think what you want to ultimately do is you want to accept small walling. And it's a good map to learn that on, because a lot of people go for full walls, right? So, and you want to be on this wood line. There's almost always one wood line there. And that is, generally speaking, going to be your focus throughout the feudal age, is are they on the wood line? Can I range it with anything? Can I kill vills there? And then in castle age, it's just preventing your opponent from expanding. But once you can make town centers, it's like, it's all about good scouting. So you can town center wood and gold. Town center wood and gold. But, um... Yeah, anyways, what they're doing here is fine. You can start up on these wood lines, but it's it's really just control of wood that becomes really important. Oh, wow, Blue is really making a lot of military here. 11 man-at-arms. And we've got the, the original group here. And then you've got you know this group as well waiting. I, I don't know if these guys are going to move out and attack. Obviously, Blue is completely blind to what the opponent's doing. His scout died somewhere. And then meanwhile, Red is building up farming eco and is actually just playing defense with some towers here. But let's look at the res collected. So it's actually quite different than what I expected. I thought Blue would maybe have 500 more resources collected simply due to the amount of food eco. But I guess the farm count's a bit closer now. Yeah, yeah, you've got 11 farms versus 9. So Red just happy to hold to the hill for now. Also, even mixing in some archers here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Anu, I, I will have my game reviewer looking anyways. So I'm not going to send an extra ping about that game, but sounds like it was fun. Good old stuff. Good old stuff. What am I talking about? Okay, so big attack coming. Do we see a town bell is my question. We've got to see a town bill, right? Uh, I, well, obviously, you want to pull the villagers away. That's what I suggest. You do not have loom here for red. And maybe red wants to build multiple towers. Like, a tower here would make sense, too. If you're thinking defensive tower makes sense here. I think a defensive tower would make sense here as well. We won't have any blacksmith upgrades. But there is going to be four archers on the field for red. If red pulls everything together, this could be cleared. Will Red have the skill at 500 ELO to just select and garrison? Or is it just going to be click the bell? Tower might scare Blue off, honestly. And Blue's not running forward with everything, similar to what happened with Red earlier. And okay, here's the attack. And wow, there was a third option. <laughs> we have no garrisoning and just building of another tower. And Blue's angry because of earlier. Blue's like, you killed my villagers. I'm going to kill your villagers too. Ah! And really forcing the issue here on these villagers and is going to lose almost everything here. Nice defense there from Red. Red had the army waiting. And Red now might be feeling good enough about moving out with everything. Now the double tower here, I'm not so sure on. But it's not bad. You know, it still protects some stone. It protects the front lines. 
people will be able to sleep at night when they know that they've got some extra security there. So that's pretty cool. And, oh, man, okay, guys. I don't know if you've realized the theme here, but this is pretty wild. Okay, so... <laughs> I didn't say it originally. Now I'm certain. Okay, so Blue showed up to the opponent's base with the scout earlier. All right? Encountered militia. And then left. And then immediately started making militia. Okay? Then Blue got attacked. Lost some stuff. But kind of already had some army because Blue was like, Oh, that's a pretty good idea. I should do that too. Now... We didn't have any range units for blue, okay? We didn't have archers, we didn't have skirmishers. And we didn't have towers either. And blue shows up to red's base to go kill and sees archers and skirmishers and sees towers. And what does blue do? Hey, that's a really good idea, actually. I'm gonna drop some towers. I'm gonna make archers and skirmishers. Blue thus far, anytime something bad happens to him, is like, oh, oh, that's a really nice idea. It worked against me. It might work against him as well. And I'm not trying to make fun of it, by the way. It's actually a really good way of learning the game. Uh, you counter certain things and then try and add it to your own gameplay. But it is interesting to see it within the same game. Typically, it's like, okay, you have a game plan, X, Y, or Z. It happens. You win or lose the game. Then next time you take that knowledge. We're seeing blue learning. Blue might be going a little overboard with the production, though. Like, holy, we've got more man-at-arms. We've got more spearmen. I don't know how many resources are held up right now in production, but it's a lot. And Red is on the way to Castle Age, and Red could obviously build up towards upgrades. Also, this is a bit interesting from Red. Red expanding down here to this wood line. So I prefer Red's point of view because Red is going to be in Castle Age and can get upgrades. But we'll see if Red's going to be able to use the smaller numbers effectively. Will Blue click up the Castle Age once Red is there? Oh, that's a really good point. Well, Blue's not going to have the resources. But the resources should be flowing pretty steadily. It's going to be 18 farms pretty soon. Now, last time Red attacked, Red attacked on the front. And so Red might be thinking we need to see a sneak attack here. I like how Red's using the scout here. This is really good play. Oh, man. This is epic. Okay, scout shows up. Scout's going to see the villagers there. This is exactly what you want if you're Red. We've got AI army comps from both players. Just a mix of kind of everything. Red has seemed very scared to move forward with everything. There's always defensive armies at home. Okay, so now the scout starts attacking. Now, this is going to give Blue a heads up. And Blue is just waiting on the front lines, right? We've not actually seen any reactions here from Blue, which is concerning. Um, okay, the army's on the way. Are we going to... Well, we know what happened with Blue earlier. Blue didn't save the Vils. Blue, what you want to do is you want to run with the villagers and then bring an army over. The <laughs> I would not want to be a villager in this guy's town. <laughs> he said, screw you guys. Just wait. <laughs> Maybe he forgets that you can control them after you create them. Maybe they're just on that task forever. Anyways, all the extra military from Blue is going to clear this. And Blue just won't stop, man. Like, this is a crazy army. And Blue also has a similar vil count to Red. Red's in Castle Age. Red can get upgrades, but Red doesn't really have much army anymore, so... This isn't bad. Look at this guy! He's just being sent to a farm! <laughs> Blue doesn't freaking care. <laughs> I love Charlie, man. Dude, this guy's awesome. <laughs> Very entertaining player. He makes a lot of army, which is probably what has, you know, gotten him some big wins. I think Red maybe has more, like, game knowledge in some ways, right? Like, But, you know, anything can happen in these games. That's the beauty of low elo. Big old freaking army here. And Castle Age could come in here shortly for blue. Okay, red is getting Bod Canero, which affects the range units and buildings. Uh, but there's only, I guess, eight range units. We have seen Longsword with the Castle Age armor. That's pretty strong. 
But what wins? Eight longswords or 24 men-at-arms? I think 24 men-at-arms win. Hansa, you, you say you not sure how blue got to 520 elo, but we actually don't... First off, we don't know how he got here, right? He might be on his way down. He might be on a losing streak. I don't have that information. But also, I don't think so. Look at the idle TC time. It's pretty solid, right? The, the eco setup, solid. Um, it looks like upgrades are coming in now. So blue probably just forgot those. And blue makes a ton of army. The issue for blue, I would say, is more so the fact that the army's made and we don't see a lot of aggression with it. Because there were moments where blue would have committed with everything that, you know, could have been problematic. But both players have kind of done that. Where they go forward and they, um, they'll keep a defensive army at home, right? I I'm, think this is really solid play. But, oh my god, where's Castle Age at? Where does resources go? <laughs> Hold on. I turned off market events, by the way. Oh, it's the blacksmith upgrades! <laughs> okay, blue. In the future, you don't have to pay attention to me. No one else does anyways, okay? I would just suggest, and if you want to take a strategy out of my my strat book, okay? Um, click up to Castle Age first, and then get the blacksmith upgrades. Now, it's possible Blue is a completionist, and Blue's like, I won't go to the next stage until every single tech is researched. Some people like to play like that, and that's cool, I guess. But, you know, just some things to consider. Red, meanwhile, says, more workers is best for me, so we have the second town center and more villagers being created. You can tell Red is solely focused on the creation of villagers and adding economy. Overall, it's pretty solid. Red will have the eco lead when blue makes it to castle there's no doubt if blue makes it to castle because still at this point blue is still spending food on spearmen and man at arms maybe it's a uh maybe it's a ratio thing too like i need to have more army than eco all the time like holy crap man <laughs> this guy hates castle age just hates it <laughs> I think this is every tech now. I'm trying to think what techs he's missed. He has wheelbarrow. He has both mining upgrades. He has wood and farm. So eco is so is sorted. He has man at arms. He has all blacksmith upgrades. Yes, he had, he officially has every single tech in feudal age now. So if those are the rules he's playing by, he can now click up to the next stage, and now he can click up to the next stage. Okay. He also has made every single possible building except for a dock, I guess. Oh my god. <laughs> this siege army is going to be devastating to blue. Ah! Now, oh, but then again, we've got stables. Does he have town watch? It looks like he has town watch to me, yeah. Oh man, you know with blue being Huns that stables could be a problem for red. Especially since Red's main army is Scorpions. Now, Blue doesn't really have a lot of gold. So, the night production won't really be that possible. Now, we've got a defensive castle on the kill uh, on the hill here, excuse me for Attila. I, I don't mind the position. I think I would prefer to see the castle closer to extra wood and gold, right? Like, you're going to be leaving your hill now anyways. So I think this is maybe better. But... Yeah, blue might show up to this area at some point. It's never bad to have a safe castle, especially when you want to produce the units out of it. Hmm. University now. Cheaper university technologies for the Italians. Blue is now making scouts and dropping yet another tower. Oh, that's true. We didn't have bloodlines. But bloodlines will come in before Castle Age, so it still works. Blue will also have the stone for a castle soon. Blue's going to make an outpost for vision towards the middle of the map. Let's see if blue can upgrade all these units. We're going to see a second town center. All right. Red's dropping a TC on this stone. Not bad. We have ballistics. We've got elite skirm. We've got pikes. Red's just getting a lot of upgrades on units right now. No! 
not heated shots. No. Oh, we all know, but Red doesn't. I made a video on the most confusing text in Age of Empires 2 where I talked about how heated shot isn't actually relevant here. I mean, it could be if your opponent made ships and you made towers next to the pond. I am going to assume that Red is confusing this with chemistry. So heated shot on the way, both in my chat and also in the university. That does not make your arrows have flames. As much as it would make sense, because when you shoot arrows, you can call it a shot, and fire is heated. So, it's fine. Um, Blue, what are you up to here, buddy? I was expecting a big old attack from you when you made it to the next stage. Anything? Can we maybe have a scouting expedition? There's a scout. I think the scout might see this little, this girly miner there. M-I-N-E-R. <laughs> Uh, scouts on the way. <laughs> Man, sometimes I say things, don't realize how stupid it sounds. Ah! And scout actually gives excellent knowledge here to the potential attack. And I don't know how much blue knows, but I would be very scared of that. And you need knights, man. You need lots of knights against that. That's the answer. Light calf could work. But I think, again, for blue, it's like, well, I don't have enough army yet. I don't have enough upgrades. So we go for pikemen, we go for longsword, and then we just go for more pikes, more longsword. I love I love how he I, I just it makes me so happy when players do this. We have the back and forth queuing routine. Man at arms, pikeman, man at arms, pikeman, pikeman, man at arms. Love it. Cause they don't know exactly like what units to make, but they're like, let's just mix it up. Because how can they counter a mix? Loving the amount of technologies we were seeing from Red. A blue scout kills a villager there. Not bad. So, you know... I think blue is the potential to be more aggressive as a player. I'm just concerned that blue's gonna run right into this big ball of siege. And then red has more eco. Has two relics as well, which is, of course, fantastic. And a blue now dropping another TC. This game is gonna go late, guys. This game is going to go late. The farming eco is flying for blue. Let's check res collected. Red's ahead because of all the gold. But maybe when blue hits 100 military, we'll actually see a fight. Look at red use the market. Okay. Accidentally bought. Wait, what happened there? I don't know. Anyways, the market is being smacked across the face constantly right now. Guard tower, ballistics, heated shot, town centers everywhere. Kind of like small little armies protecting exposed areas too. Relics are in the very south of the map. That's not bad. Really, it's well spread out here. I'd even get this one. Now guys, Huns don't get champion. They... So, so like the longsword move, it kind of has its limits and ideally if you're going to use that unit you'd be using it in castle age <laughs> oh man it made me so happy if, if blue just made more staples <laughs> but hey we're huns guys we're huns so you can produce faster and to be fair blue is focusing on expanding the economy pretty massively I wonder who's going to build those farms, though. I noticed some players, like, if the villagers are on a task, they'll hold shift and then place the farm, so it's like the vill- Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Did he set his TC rally point onto the farms? Oh, that's what he did. Interesting. Okay, so all new farmers- or all new villagers go to those farms. That's not a bad way of doing it, either. Red hasn't attacked with this big lead. And so here goes Blue with Lycav. Just passing from both players. They didn't really notice each other. I'm sure that burr, burr, attack signal will maybe notify Blue this is happening. And Blue sees the scorpions and says, Not today, buddy. I'm going to kill all your scorpions. 
And blue, this is definitely a situation where you just want to let your units engage. This is fine. And then, yep, now maybe pull away and run somewhere else. Longsword still just patrolling at home with the pikemen and the archers. There's such a massive army. A hundred army almost. And he's almost at max pop. <laughs> it's for... That's crazy. I mean, Red's not doing bad either. Red's at 70 army, which is also insane. It is cheaper for the Italians to go up to the Imperial Age. We have not seen that yet for Red, but I think it'll happen in a moment. And there you go. Why build infantry as the Huns? Just go cav only? Well, first off, because they look really cool. All right? You can't tell me these guys don't look amazing, because they do. Um... Second reason is probably blue doesn't really know what's good, which is why blue has made literally, like, everything possible. And then the third reason is because red made militia, and it killed stuff, so blue was like, wow, that's a great idea. So that's basically how I think things flowed. Blue wants to make everything, and blue's now also made Tarkins. And research marauders, which means you can make Tarkins from stables, but in blue's case, it's not going to be stables, it's going to be stable. I have not seen a lot of production buildings from blue. Okay, red is imping. And man, does red have siege. Red's going to have 16 scorpions. Now, I've complained about the fact that Tarkins are one of the most classic units in the game and the devs haven't given them their sound back, okay? So here's another example. Hashtag bring back the thump. I really want Tarkins to have their thump again, but... You want to make use of the fact that they've been completely neglected, despite being one of the favorite civilizations for so many people in our game, and I feel it is a great injustice. If you want to make use of it, you could raid with the Tarkins, because they don't make noise. It's a silent but deadly raid. Now, there would normally be an attack signal, so you will hear that. A red probably does hear that, but you know, it's just an idea. There's the Pavise upgrade for red. And, hmm, it's funny, like, all of these other units actually make sound when they attack. It's crazy how that works. And, um, Pavise will give your archers extra armor. And Blue's just gonna keep on moving by. The thing that Red has done a good job of, though, is that Red is in so many different spots. It's gonna be incredibly hard for Blue to grind Red down. Because if you lose this area, you still have all these other areas. <laughs> still feel like the giant, relatively unprotected ball of siege is maybe not the best plan in the long term for red. <laughs> also, Huns, uh, we talked some about things that Huns lack. Uh, Huns do lack. Oh, God, don't send the infantry. Oh, not the infantry. The siege is great against infantry. Well, this is how you get rid of long swords. They'll still clear it all up. Actually, it's not too bad because the light cap get in against the scorpions. What a crazy battle. But anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Huns don't get Guard Tower. One of the few civs that don't. So the towers also don't scale that well, but that's going to be a big clear-up. And if you look at what Red's bringing into the fight at the moment, Red is bringing in Pikemen. So if Blue were to continue fighting this, Blue would win the fight, but I think Blue sees the pointiness of the sticks of the pikes and doesn't necessarily think that that is going to be a good fight. Hey, Red's got good numbers. Red has better blacksmith engage, uh, upgrades as well. And, well, Red's even going to upgrade to two-handed swords. In here. So, uh, well, we'll see if blue breaks here. Doesn't look like it. I mean, blue's got resources. Something that Red doesn't seem to realize is how good the Genoese crossbow can be in this matchup. And... It's going to be awkward to engage against all these towers underneath the towers against the Tarkins, too. But with the Pikemen there, man, I think the Tarkins are going to die pretty quickly. They're not elite Tarkin. And Blue's just going to queue up more Longswords. It's funny, though, because the Longswords actually one of your best units against the composition that we're seeing from the opponent. It's actually not... It, it's still kind of worth it in many ways. I think Blue has always had an issue with being assertive. So I'm worried that if Blue clears this, and I'm sure Blue will hear, that Blue won't be able to retaliate. 
But actually, I take back those words, because blue was assertive and rated red before, right up here, so... At the end of the day, guys, after the dust settles here, it's 140 population for both. And uh, the resources are still sky high for blue, and we know blue likes to get techs. And blue actually has two-handed swordsmen queued up in there. The next thing we need blue to do is find the blacksmith again, probably, but... Yeah, we got stone and gold income. We've got fervor! Because that's important. Got to get those monks moving quickly to get the relics. There's, a, there's one relic there. That could be nice. An elite Tarkin. Let's go. I'm liking Blue's strategy. He's making himself look weak to bait them in. Uh, you think that's happening? Maybe. I like Red's strategy of fortifying the key areas. Um, and expanding with the town centers. Because eventually you just... You don't want to be stuck in this corner forever, right? You got to move out of mom and dad's house eventually, Blue. But this is a good start. <laughs> I, I doubt Blue knows that... Uh, what the Marauder's tech did. I think Blue just clicked the tech. Because, again, that allows you to produce Tarkins from stables. But we're just going to wait for this castle to produce the Tarkins, I suppose. 170 HP. Super silent. Which player is more like an AI? Guys, like, these guys have both done similar things. Look at the variety of units. This might set a record. Right? Because, like, the Italians already have so many different units. And then the way Blue's played it as well. For Red, we have four Genoese cross... Oh my god, it's like the 12 Days of Christmas. Um, on the first... No, I'm not doing it. Uh, five Hussars, seven Condos, seven Pikes, eight Cavs, eight Crossbowmen, 13 Swordsmen, 20 Skirms, 91 Vils, one Treb, seven Scorpions, uh, soon to be eight Hand Cannons, two Monks, uh, three Cav Archers, and then five Golden Crossbow... Genoese Crossbow. He's just got so much. He's not really committed to one particular thing, but he's got a lot of good units in there. We've not seen any cav archers yet from blue, which makes me sad, but I do like the production buildings we're seeing now. It's not too bad. Red, also great awareness to notice the blue in the minimap there, because blue was trying to chop some trees. So ripped those villagers. Dun, 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 dun. Have you ever thought about having a day where you stream AoE, but with different game modes? Uh, I prefer to do videos with those, not do it on stream. Because as much as I like fast villager defense in CBA, uh, a high percentage of the games are not actually good content, in my opinion. And it can I think it'd be tricky to do it live. Instead, I, I can have someone review games, or I can review games myself and find things for videos. And I want to do more with those. But yeah, we did try that before. Oh my god, Blue's going to try and wall. And you can't wall on the rock terrain. So it's kind of awkward, but it does create like a nice little choke point. So it still probably accomplishes something. Hmm. Are we going to see an attack from blue? I mean, blue's making trebs now. There goes red. Red's going to run right into that castle. This army as well is a little underwhelming. I think blue could honestly make something happen here, guys. Like, obviously, blue's got to have to look over here. But if you just think of the Tarkin, the Tarkin's actually good against everything that's being created except the Genoese Crossbowman. Elite Tarkin's even going to be fine against Pikes as long as the Blacksmith upgrades are researched because that's a bit of an issue for Blue right now. I don't know if Blue sees this. Oh my god, <laughs> Red comes in with another force. Oh, the three-pronged attack. Wow, really impressive. Don't tell me these swordsmen are going to take down this castle. Oh, man. Red. What a great move. So, Blue's going to clear this. No. No. <laughs> no. Don't lose a castle to four units. We need murder hulls. The raids. Blue's been wide open for so long. No. <laughs> oh, he's panicking, guys. He doesn't know what to do. 
Well, it's not that he doesn't know what to do. He needs to stop this, but there's too many things happening, and he's lost, like, 40 villagers. And meanwhile, while the resources aren't that high for red, red has full map control. Blue did end up getting two relics, I've just noticed. I don't know if we'll ever see a reboom here, so it's the villagers you have now that are probably going to last you till the end of time. And there's not going to be a whole lot. And, oh my god, he's using trebs against... Trebs and monks against these swordsmen. Oh, and whoever doubted him. Well, actually, hold on. Oh, okay. Well, no, that's perfect. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay. This is funny content. Okay, friends. So this is something that is hilarious to break down. All right. So here we have four red two-handed swordsmen, all right? You see them swinging, holding the sword with two hands? Yeah, that's what makes them special. Over here on the right side, at the top right, we have the champion upgrade, okay? And so these are going to be upgraded here in a moment for red. Um, blue has these two old men walking over here, and they're he's going to try and convert these units. Now... The conversions aren't going to happen at the same time, and watch what happens. Okay, I mean, forget the trebuchet balls that are coming in for these swordsmen. That's already kind of funny enough. Okay, so we are now five seconds away from the champion upgrade. We are now two seconds away from the champion upgrade. Champion upgrade happens in, in like a millisecond. It's at zero seconds on screen, so it's... Hasn't quite happened yet. <laughs> and right before uh, the upgrade, one gets converted. So blue ends up with a two-handed swordsman and a champion. And then they're all going to die together. But anyways, I thought that was pretty... Wait, no, they survive! That's pretty cool. Anyways, I always thought two-handed swordsmen look better than champions, personally. Their attack animation as well. Anyways, we can continue on with the rest of the game. Interesting moment. Um, listen, if Blue's got a chance, it's with 150 army, and Blue just, Blue now has the pop space, which is kind of cool, right? There's a lot of gold banked up. Castle's still up. It's going to be repaired partially anyways. Um, and I'm just thinking blacksmith upgrades. I, I assume Blue's just forgotten about blacksmith upgrades at this point. We're just not seeing it. Uh, food count isn't. Well, it is coming in fast enough where a couple could be researched. But Red continues to do this variety pack of, of units here. And that could be really bad. Because here's the thinking with that. I think players think, I can't be countered if I make a little bit of everything. But what you should actually be thinking is, if your opponent's fighting with a lot of one unit, usually like 50% of your army is not going to be good against that unit. Now, they probably do it because they don't really under... They don't know what's good against what, and that's fair. Um, and it's like a safe play. But if you're a variety guy, sometimes it's best to just stick to two types of units that cover different bases, right? So, like, Halberdier or, like, an anti-cav unit. Could be Genoese Crossbow in this case. Combined with an anti-archer unit. Like, you know, um, you know, skirms. Or... Usually you have like a gold unit, your best gold unit. So if you're Huns, a paladin, combined with a trash unit, which counters that counter. Like, uh, I don't know, skirmishers, which is good against like pointy boys or Genoese crossbow. Anyways, it's a tricky game. Uh, this monk is just giving these guys a pep talk now and healing them up before they go attack. And blue is going to freaking get to 160 army. It's going to happen. Blue, well, well. Uh, Blue is kind of producing more vills. But there is going to be one gigantic attack that's going to end this game. So let's see. I think for Blue to have the best chance, Blue needs to have blacksmith upgrades. And Blue just looked at the stable and said, ooh, an upgrade. And just looked at the archer range and said, ooh, an upgrade. Are we now going to see blacksmith and ooh upgrades? Yes. I believe in blue. I actually, I'm going to make a what's quite possibly a bold statement and say blue is going to win this game. Because blue is going to be going all out. 
Blue's going to have like 10 trebs. Blue's going to have a massive force. I think it will be tough for Blue to control all the units, but still. <laughs> Red's going to try and raid again. With, with everything that his heart desires here. And heads right over to Blue's gold. This is good from Red. Keep the initiative. Force reactions from the opponent. Don't allow Blue to do what he needs to do. It's going to be a nice raid. Good little combination here. Also bringing trebs. I think one treb came the last time. So now we have two. That's double the amount of trebs. Blue still has lots of army in queue. Here go the swordsmen. That is 42 swordsmen. Now again, back to kind of what I'd said before. If Blue actually fights. Um... You know, your skirmishers and your pikemen don't offer anything here against the two-handed sword. It would just be, I guess, the cavalier. And the, the scorpions do actually help out a lot. Blue's still getting upgrades, and Blue's going to clear this. We do have a lot of anti-micro-micro from Blue, which means sometimes you just have to let your units fight instead of clicking them around, right? Just let them do their thing. But that's a clear. Red's going to make more units. We have had a banger of a game. Blue's only killed five villagers this game. Has lost so many and is, is basically running out of resources here. But refuses to quit and has 112 army after that engagement. Come on, Charlie, please. Please notice the blacksmith upgrades. Whoa, did I miss a... What happened here? Hold on. Oh my god! <laughs> Guys, <laughs> Red is a strategist. I don't, I don't miss that. Red sent in condos. Oh, he sent in a big force to try and take out the castle. Dang, that's not the first time he's done that. Nice little two-pronged attack there, bro. I didn't even notice. So, anyways, I guess Blue was reacting there as well. Yep, you could see he paid attention because the trebs were ready. Wouldn't recommend using traps, but you can't friendly fire, so I suppose it kind of works. Yup. And all right, I guess I'll show this fight since we missed it. And the castle will still stay up. So that's why Red lost so much army, because it wasn't just this. Dang. Pretty good game here. I'm enjoying it. And I think Acropolis is really interesting, because you always have the defender's advantage if you're on the hill. Um, but expanding to other resources is still super important. And we've seen Red do that. That's going to be relic number three for Red. I think that monk was standing in the middle of the map. Like, right around here for a long time. Somehow the amount on food is still higher for blue. The amount on gold is, is doable, I suppose. And blue is adding more vills. But the amount on food is not going to stay like that forever. Because farms are going to need wood to reseed. And there's just not enough wood income. Come on, Blue. Get blacksmith upgrades. Do it for the people. One hour and 15 minutes in. You can do it. People are rooting for you right now. And then some people are rooting for Red. Because they're like, man, I feel bad for Red. Red's had so much control here. But guys, Red doesn't really have a lot of gold. I guess there is this gold income. But that's the only gold income right now. But we do have pikemen. We do have skirmisher. We do have hussar tech tensors. So those are options. <laughs> Blue's just like... <laughs> Blue's just like... I don't have enough stuff yet. I'm not 200 pop. We must wait for our people to heal. We've got monks healing here. We've got a monk healing here. We have to be full strength before we ever move out. Is Red gonna mass another group here? Almost looks like it. Like, Red wants to go in and take this castle. And Blue isn't repaired it more, so that would definitely go down. Even a petard! Sheesh! And some trebs. Okay, so last time we had... The first time we had one treb here. This past time we had two trebs. Now, guys, we are going to see three trebuchets. Because there's another on the way. And then a petard. So Red continues to up the ante and bring in a little bit more with each push. Oh, jeez. We're going to have bomber cannons and rams, too. Holy cow. I wonder if we're going to see Paladin from Blue, because Blue doesn't... He doesn't like the Blacksmith. I've given up on thinking that that's actually going to happen now. 
So I'm going to use reverse psychology and say blue will not get blacksmith upgrades. But maybe we'll see the paladin upgrade. I don't know if it's worth it to upgrade six cavalier, but still. Mm. Pretty crazy game. Blue's probably like, if I hear the monk healing sounds, we do not fight because we're not ready yet. And actually, some stone was purchased to repair this castle a little bit more. So that'll take it up to 1,200. And red has clicked the trebs in towards blue's castle. But they roll right into blue's units. So the castle will stand. I believe it will, yes. Meanwhile, we have Tarkins against Hussars. And then we've got some Skirmishers and Crossbows up against the rest. I mean, Blue's going to hold against this. Red can't figure out how to break this guy. Charlie takes the score lead for a moment, if that matters to you guys. Red actually taking good fights here, though. Red, the Cavalier, having as many Blacksmith upgrades as they do has is, is really made the difference. <laughs> Blue... The defensive tread move is just, it's such a Charlie play, you know? <laughs> and now the Trebs are going after the castle because Red made one. Blue, get your units here. Get your units here. Where's your army? Come on, defend the people. Defend the Trebs. We can't be tossing away gold like this. Not in this economy. All right. Well, Red's clearly sit the unit, sat the units here to defend the castle. And... You know, now let's see how this goes. There's still a big army here for blue. We have a big raid here from red. Villagers are fighting back. So blue noticed this and is clicking the villagers to fight instead of sending army there. I'm very confused. <laughs> but hey, castle goes down. So no more castle for red. Blue has shown very little, uh, I guess, affection for his economy in these game, this game. And red might finally have blue on the ropes because blue is down to 50 villagers and only 60 army. What blue needs is a moment to just think and stabilize. And man, these units just die so fast without blacksmith upgrades. And then make more army because the resources are there. And well, okay, 48 hussars are on the way out of these stables. Now, hussars are weaker when compared to the Tarkin or the Cavalier. But they also look cool. Like, they might look better than the Cavalier, in all honesty, so that might be a big part. Good job from Red to slowly grind down Blue here. This is really impressive. I also love how Red attacks in two places at once. That is something that everyone can learn from. Even something I can learn from. And... Obviously, at low elo, there's going to be some mistakes on both sides, right? There's going to be some things that could be improved. But you have to give yourself the best chance of success. And timing attacks like this and expanding and, and having different military buildings and different types of units, all these things really help you. And I think for blue, you, you, it had to be with 150 army. Had to be better army or better upgrades. And we're starting to see blue fall apart now. Really hard to micro this many units down. So, I think some lessons learned here for blue. Ultimately, though, uh, red, the the better player for Acropolis. Let's just say that. Loved the buildup. And still, just the variety is so freaking cool to me, dude. You just don't see this at higher ranked games. Like you, When someone comes to attack you, there's the petard, by the way. On paper, right, you're supposed to make an assessment of how do I counter that, right? Not easy to do when this is what's showing up in your base. <laughs> it makes you think too hard sometimes. <laughs> You're like, uh, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, that all that combined with the fact that these players are still kind of learning the game and lack some aspects of the basics makes it pretty good. And I think the GG will have to be called. Overall, a pretty good game. I talked about zip lines and gators and random stuff at the start. We got to see both players impersonate their favorite AI. Um, I'm not sure why villagers are now coming in from red. Blue's still got gold, but blue's not going to have food and wood now, which is the issue. Okay, tower. 
Maybe a little bit ambitious, but Red probably decided to build this tower 10 minutes ago because the villagers were somewhere else. Castle has been key for Blue. 52 kills for this castle. Make it 53 now. All right. Red is out of gold except for the three relics bringing in gold. Is there a chance for Blue to stabilize? My dog is scared of the thunderstorm outside. Do you have any words for him? Well... It's actually thundering for me outside as well. Um, I, I don't have any words for your dog. But you told me that your dog likes to relax with my videos when he's stressed, so. Sounds like a cute pup. <laughs> hmm. Blue, I want to believe in you so bad. You're producing more bills now. Like, also at the same time, if you win this game, I feel like you're not going to learn certain lessons. The good news for you, Blue is I don't think, like, it's not like you're not making the army or making the economy. You do all that. It is just kind of decision-making. Remembering to get blacksmith upgrades, that's something that you just get used to as you play. And then the other part of it is just, like, you know, attack from time to time. Like, initially, when blue was raiding earlier, it was really good. I would have liked to have seen a raid down here. Like, red would lose so much down here, down here. But it's really easy to be tunnel visioned on the defense when you're behind, so. Again, red has every single blacksmith upgrade. So if we're just talking about cavalier v cavalier, I know blue's not really making them, but if we were, right? We're looking at uh, 12 plus 1 attack versus 12 plus 4. So 3 attack difference there. And then you've got the full armor. we got 2 armor upgrades over top of what blue's going on. So in terms of the pierce armor, the melee armor, there's just too big a difference there. And really, I think the lack of pierce armor has been the issue, because you've got, like, some random skirmishers and random archers that have been doing more damage to the cav than it should for blue. Blue knows to make more vills. Sneaks over here to chop wood and everything. Blue seems to have no interest in resigning. Red, I think you have the idea, but uh, I think your favorite unit in this position should be the Hussar. Let's make Hussars. Guys, I really... I kind of got to pee right now. Can I go do that? Is that cool? I guess I'm, you're not in charge of me. <laughs> mm, I'll wait it out. I, I believe that Blue will have one more stand and then finally accept that it's not winnable. Because as much as Blue seems to be playing on, I don't think Blue actually has much hope. Red's just got things everywhere. And Red's going to be massing more traps. Red really wants this castle. Like, this castle's been a thorn in Red's side. But it will arrive to a point where Blue just actually cannot afford to make anything. We are at, almost at that point now because the food eco is not good enough. We have some of this gold going into buying food right now, which is never a great thing in late game. Here comes this force. Have the Scorpions paid off at all here for Red this game? I don't know if they've all paid off. There was a couple instances, I guess, where the Scorpions were effective. Alt, wait, the two-pronged attack again. Okay, the double treb move. Blue will think this is everything. In reality, this is everything. The one treb. Okay. Well, it's a little unprotected at the moment. The the men were given orders to arrive at 131. They've arrived at 132, so they're going to lose their treb now. It was actually a treb v treb battle. And now the the building, the military buildings for blue is starting to go down. It's a slog, guys. It's a slog. But it's Loey the Legends. And it is a, a fun little game. I love the fighting spirit because there are a lot of people who are way higher rank than this who resign at the slightest inconvenience. Some people just get so frustrated with themselves that the enemy, they just they just quit over anything, man. Like, I see 1,200 ELO players quit over losing a villager or two. Meanwhile, these guys, they're still playing on. Like, Blue's still playing on. Now, this is maybe bordered into the extremes. Um, but Blue's like, Mom said one more game. And I spent a long time collecting these resources, so I'm going to freaking spend them. Right? 
That stable is currently spending a lot of the golden food, making the cavalier. We don't have production out of all the buildings, though. So another thing that Blue could learn, just double-click them. Okay, Red. You're slowly taking out the buildings. You've got it. You're making my job you know, difficult here, trying to give me more things to talk about. I get it. But Red's got the momentum right now. And Red's going to be able to take out these trebs. Which, if there were to be a comeback possible here, would put an end to it. And even more trebs coming in. Lots of skirms this game from uh, from Red. Lots of skirms. Way more skirms than anything else, I think. Maybe Scorpions is right behind it. Yeah. Stables will go down. Blue, you're you've officially been broken here. It's possible you've gained a lot of fans. I'm not really sure. This would be the time to call the GG or, you know, just resign. And, uh, well, it was a good game. The reason I like Acropolis is because of the need to expand. And you could see that Red knew that and Blue maybe did not. But still was a good one. I kind of liked how Red set the pace of the game, right? Um, Red attacked. Blue said, ooh, I want to make Man at Arms. He ended up making like 50 of them. Uh, Red make Archers and Skirms. Uh, Blue goes, ooh, that seems really cool too. I'm going to make a bunch of them, right? It really was Red who had, I guess, control over the whole game, did collect 50,000 more resources, uh, KD, also in the positive there for Attila on fire. And it, it, it grinded out there near the tail end, but I think, because we always want that comeback, but I think next time Blue's on Acropolis, Blue's going to know to use that mobility, and that's really the main thing. There's, you, you resign here. If you look at the map to think, what could I have done differently? You see, okay, this is protected. This isn't protected. This isn't protected. Just like a couple units into the corners could be so effective there instead of just sitting back. Because if you just sit back, if you just wait, embrace yourself, you think you're being defensive. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm defending myself. This is great for us. Uh, not really, because you're just being reactive the whole time, and they're just going to pick their spots, and you might defend the first, the second, the third army, but they're going to come in with a fourth because they still have the economy. So definitely some things to look for if you're blue next time you play. But GG.